far away in the northern piney woods, there lives a storyteller named Maynard Moods. Every full moon in the forest, the animals come from near and far to hear him tell the old Mother Moose tales. Handed down so long ago, young and old, big and small, fur and feather, the woodland creatures gathered round and settled down on moss and branch and log to listen. Did you ever walk out one fine and furry morning to sniff the breeze? And hear the birdies go troop, cheap pool, when all of the sudden, pow, something would knock you down, and you would be scared, and run home, and feel bad, and stare out the window, and not know what to do. Well, this is a story about that, and it goes like this. Once upon a time, there was a large and dubnoxious billy goat. His name was Bully Goat Grim. He was twice more larger than normal, having bulked up in his youth on wild tuberoot, which, as you may understand, contains a dibondence of natural steroids. So he grew to a large and ungainly size, and as if that were not bad enough, he had a extremely bad case of random hostility syndrome. His favorite thing to do was whenever he would see a cute little furry forest amuno, he would lower his big bony bully. Goat head, and get him, get him, get him, get him, get him, po. Over the tops of the trees would go sailing the hapless little furry mammal, and come crashing down in a pile of bracken on the other side. And pretty soon, all the cute forest amunos had slings and crutches and bandages. Well, one morning, when all the little bunnies, and chipmunks, and beavers, and hamsters were bonked and bruised and hiding in their holes, the bully goat decided to go to the upland pastures, where he has heard that a wild variety of succulent mountain grasses grew in gay profusion. Now, the road to the upland pastures. It went over the river, and over the river there was a bridge, and under the bridge there lived a family of trolls. There was a mummy troll with three heads, a daddy troll with two heads, and a little baby troll. With only one head, but they loved her anyway, because you should be grateful for what you are given. They were a happy little troll family. They liked to wallow about in the mud down by the river bank, and every Wednesday they would go to the dump and bring home large and useless, rusted and rotten objects. And every night, they would sit up late, having rude noises contests, and they would all sleep in the next morning. Well, on this particular day, they were sleeping in as usual, when suddenly overhead, trip trap, trip trap, along come the bully goat Grim. Well, the daddy troll. He wake up first. Who's that trip trapping on my bridge? And a dark, 
and dreadful voice below down from above. Beware, beware! The bully goat grin. Nobody better not mess with him. And trip trap, trip trap, off go the bully goat grin. Now the daddy trow, the head on the left. It spoke first. He do that again, I gonna punch him in the nose. You can't do that, say the right hand head. That's a stupid idea. Who are you calling stupid? Say the left hand head. I just mean, say the right hand head. With someone dangerous like the bully goat, you can't just go punch him in the nose. You need a plan. You can't just go and do something stupid like that. You call me stupid one more time, say the left hand head, and I will mash your nose out the back of your face. Oh yeah, say the right hand head. I'd like to see you try that. And before you know it. A left, a right, pong pong. The daddy trow has knocked himself uncomfortable. You see that? Say the mummy to the baby trow. You better learn to get along with yourself, otherwise you wind up like your father, uncomfortable as a muffin. Well, the next morning, trip trap, trip trap, over the bridge. Come the bully goat grim. This time, the mummy trow wake up first. Who's that trip trapping on my bridge? Say the mummy trow, and a dark and dreadful voice below down from above. Beware, beware! The bully goat grim. Nobody better not mess with him. And trip trap, trip trap. Off go the bully goat grin. Now the mummy trow's heads were named Bertha, Gladys, and Louise. I think," said Bertha, "we should brew three cups of tea and access the situation." Good idea," said Gladys and Louise. Now I think," said Bertha. If I may go first, certainly," said Gladys and Louise. "And thank you for checking in about that. I think," said Bertha, "that the bully goat is just acting out to get detention. I think we should explain to him that all the furry forest aminos are supposed to coexist in." Ecological harmonies. Thank you," said Gladys. "Thank you for the proactive input, but I do not think the bully goat will listen to reason. I think we need to bake a big chocolate cake, and if he promises to be good, we give him the cake. Well," said Louise. There is relative merit in both of your proposals, but I think he will listen neither to reason nor to bribery. I think we need to build a big trap door in the middle of the bridge, and when the bully goat come, he pull on the robe and splash, he go into the river below. Well. Said Bertha, "Let us then take the best aspects of all three proposals, and in a synergetic fashion combine them in order to." And so they talked on, and on, and on until one by one, all three heads fell sound asleep. Because the effects of too much process is soporific. The next morning, once again, trip, trap, 
trick trap. Over the bridge come the bully goat grin. And this time, the baby trow wake up first. Who's that trip trapping on my bridge? Say the baby trow. And once again, a dark and dreadful voice below down from above. Beware, beware, the bully goat grim. Nobody better not mess with him. And trip trap, trip trap, off go the bully goat grim. Hmm, say the baby trow. Wait a minute. Nobody better not. Nobody better not. That's a double negative. Because she had been homeschooled by Bertha, Gladys, and Louise. If nobody better not mess with him, that means that everybody out to mess with him. So let's see how can I mess with the bully goat. And all of a sudden, a light bulb go on over her head. Look at that," say Baby Trow. "There is a light bulb over my head, and look, there is a picture of a pillow and a parachute. And so the Baby Trow get up and dig through the pile of trash and garbages, and find herself a big, fat, moldy old pillow." And three raggedy old bed sheets, for to sew together to make a parachute. Early the next morning, when the bully goat come trip trapping along, the baby trow is waiting right there in the middle of the bridge, with the moldy old pillow trapped onto her behind, and the parachute on her back. Beware, beware! The bully goat grim. Nobody better not mess with him. Below the bully goat. But the baby trow put her thumps in her ears and cross her eyes and wiggle her fingers, and make the rudest the noise she know how to make. Well, this. Angry find the bully goat grim, and a thunder cloud appeared over his head. He lowered his big bony bully goat head, and got him, got him, got him, got him across the bridge. He come, but at the last second, the baby trow turn around. And stick her pillow behind, up into the air, and poof, up into the air, sail the baby trow, wee, up through the top of the clouds, pop, and at a apogee of her trajectory, she pull the rip cord and thump the parachute open. And she drifted slowly back down to the ground, saying, "Good morning," to the various strata of birdies, and buggies, and butterflies, and landing with the soft thump on the mossy bank below. Well, news about what that baby trow done, done. Spread like wildfire through the forest, and pretty soon all the forest moonals had their own pillows and parachutes, and were making rude noises at the bully goat grim. Poof! Wee! Up into the air, over the tops of the trees, would go sailing. The happy little furry amunos, drifting slowly down on the morning breeze, saying, 
good morning to the birdies and buggies and butterflies and landing with the soft thump on the forest floor below. And before long, they were lined up for miles, waiting for a free ride. My turn, bully goat. My turn. Now, there is nothing worse than having random hostility syndrome, and not being able to injure anybody. It was extremely depressing to the bully goat Grim. And so, finally, he just gave up, and slunk away. He slunk, and slunk, and slunk, until he was completely away. And the Amunos took off their pillows and their parachutes and put them in the closet, just in case. And the Trow family. Went back to wallowing in the mud down by the river bank, and every Wednesday they went back to the dump and brought home large and useless rusted and rotten objects. And every night they sat up late, having rude noises contests, and they all slept in the next morning, and they all lived happily. For never afterwards, except for the bully goat, he lived all by himself, alone and far away, obnoxiously, for never afterwards. So, my advice to you is: keep a pillow and a parachute in your closet, just in case. Learn. To recognize a double negative, and above all, remember, nobody likes a dubnoxious beastie. No matter what, be the best form of yourself. I hope you've enjoyed the story, the bully goat grim. This is the end, and the story is from your story fairies. Have a good night, sweet dreams.